Well, hello folks. Hello and welcome back to In The Loop TV, episode four. I'm your host, Don Grant, National Applications or Cutting Tool Counselor here on another episode of In The Loop TV. And this episode, we're gonna talk about helix angles on an end mill. Helix angles. You ever get confused by a helix angle on an end mill? Slow, fast, high, low, medium. What do I use? We're gonna dive into it next on In The Loop TV, episode four. Stick around. Well, hey, 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 welcome back to In The Loop TV. I'm your host, Don Grant, National Applications, Cutting Tool Counselor with another episode of In The Loop TV. Helix angles, what's a helix angle? Let's just describe this real quick. What is a helix angle? Well, you know when you get an end mill and you take a look at it and even on drills and thread mills too as well, it's the angle that you can actually see that's on an end mill that creates the spiral. Well, what does it mean? How do we use it? This episode, we're not just gonna talk about that angle and what it does. I'm gonna put it in a couple situations and tell you how to use it a little bit better. Can't wait, but we gotta go to the shop and talk about it in a little bit more detail. Let's go. Okay, folks, we're in the shop. What are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about helix angles. Helix angles specifically on end mills. And what does a helix angle do? What does it cause as far as good things in certain materials and what does it cause in for bad things and how do I determine what kind of helix angle I want on my end mill to get the best results for the application we're actually doing? Well, on this episode, we're going to dive into that. I'm going to explain slow, slow, which means gradual helix angle, fast, which means a higher helix angle, which we're going to describe. All these things we're going to relate to real life applications and how you can use them better to be more efficient at the spindle. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, you'll get notified and come back and tell all your friends about this episode. These episodes from In The Loop TV, we enjoy it. Hope you're enjoying it too. Let's dive into helix angles very specifically. So let's just talk about high helix and low helix. What are the main effects that both of those have on your material and what's the difference? Well, let's start out with just like a straight flute, right? You can start with a straight flute, which means the flute is going straight like this. And then from there, zero degrees from straight, that's called zero, then we would be at 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way up to 45 and 60 degrees. So first of all, with a straight flute, what you have is the most amount of tool pressure. You got one flute that's engaged right away and the load is very heavy. So think about that because we're going to come back to it. So on a straight flute, you have strength, you have muscle, but you also have load, which means you have a lot of side pressure. As the helix gets higher, all the way up to 45 to 50 degrees, the side pressure is relieved because the load, when it's cutting, is spread along the long helix angle. So if the load is spread along the long helix angle, okay, that's a good way to relieve side pressure. The higher the helix, the less side pressure. The lower the helix, the more side pressure. So when we run with a high helix, what's the disadvantage of a high helix if we're relieving some of the side pressure? Well, some of the disadvantages is because we have that tight spiral when you're engaged in the material, that whole end mill wants to pull down. And so you get more of a down pulling force on that end mill, so it wants to pull out. So the higher helix, the less side pressure, the less side pressure because we're spreading the load, but the more down pressure. The lower the helix, all the way to a straight flute, the more side pressure, okay but the less down pressure so one's stronger one's a little weaker which one do you think is stronger it's the straight flute right of course because we're engaged we're putting a lot of side pressure but it's got a stronger cutting edge because there's more of the cutting edge engaged in your material so let's now take these two helix angles before we put them in an example let's make it a little bit more obvious for you so where do you think we would use a high helix and where do you think we would use a slower helix. Well, first of all, 
Because I said a high helix puts less side pressure on, but it does have a corkscrew effect and it does want to pull out, you're going to use a higher helix in finishing applications. Why would you use it in a finishing application? Well, because it puts less side pressure, you can take light amounts, spread that load, it cuts freer, and you get less deflection in the wall, so you can take less, okay, I gotta say this, less spring passes. You can't get away from spring passes, but you're gonna take less spring passes on a finishing application with a high helix. So think of high helix for finishing. Now, let's go to a low helix. Where would you pick a low helix or something like that? Where the material is tougher and harder and you want to muscle the material off. The lower the helix, the stronger it's going to be. Here's an example. Inconel, 625, Wasp Alloy, Hastelloy, Renee, stuff like that. You're going to notice your material specific end mills have more of a slower helix for taking more material off in HEM applications because it is a stronger end mill with a slower helix. Okay, so now let's go into applications. Where do you want to use high helix, low helix? Let's just give you some examples that'll help you out. So let's say you're running in softer material, aluminum. I'm even going to go to composite where you got composite material that's sandwiched and stuff like that or thin plates or thing like that where you're actually getting a burr at the top of the material or you're delaminating or something like that. Think about going and reducing the helix angle. Get a straighter helix angle. And I'll tell you in composites, sometimes a straight flute in a composite because you're not pulling any of that material up or even a compression cutter is going to help you because those directional forces are not pulling up. Even if you're getting a big burr on some aluminum and you're trying to reduce that burr because maybe you don't have the right geometry on an end mill, drop the helix angle and you can reduce the burr that it's actually pulling up on that. So now where would you use a fast spiral or a fast spiral on some of those same materials? Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're helical ramping into a hole to do a pocket, a high helix is very advantageous to pulling the chips out of the hole. I'm telling you, if you slow down a helix and you're doing a helical pocket and you're helical ramping down to the bottom and that helix is slow, sometimes what you have is you have a hard time getting the chips out. So go with a high helix, it'll throw the chips out. Very advantageous, very good for using a high helix and a low helix and specific applications. So now I'm going to give you the biggest secret to helix angles that you're going to need to know at the end of this episode. We design all of our cutting tools for material specific with the right helix angles for the right applications. Try to buy material specific end mills. They're already designed for those applications with the right helix angles. This was more for you to understand helix angles. So if you walk over to your drawer and you open it up and you have 15 different end mills in there, you can help decide with the application or tool path that you're actually running what helix angle you want. Again, please, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll get a lot more detail, a lot more specific to handle your application and help you through any problems that you want to get through. But hopefully you understood a little bit more about helix angles. Uh, you hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button, and you come back and join us for episode five. Can't wait to see you there. Well, hey folks, that's a wrap on episode four. Man, I hope, uh, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned a little bit about helix angles. Um, I hope you also watched episode one, two, and three. If you haven't, please go back and watch those. They're great episodes. Um, but before I go, three things in life we'll never get away from. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>